pointers that uh, I use all the time to uh, to defend when I'm in the guard, defense sweeps and submissions. And um, and I pretty much just do three things. That's all I do when I when I roll and I stand in someone's guard. There's just three things that I that I try to do all the time, and I'm going to try to get to um, Then I can say that I always train to get to in like projects. You know, I always have like one thing that's on my project list. Used to have a little little list on my on my fridge, and it has like two or three things, and that's the only stuff I will ever try in sparring. So anyone I roll with, I will just try these things that's on my fridge. Uh, I went a little bit too deep in the rabbit hole with this because this thing has been on my fridge for more than 10 years. And it didn't just say, stand in someone's guard and don't get swept or submitted. Right? And that's what I've been doing every camp and every gym I walked into, every, every role I ever had. Uh, I, uh, in the last 10 years, I tried to stand in people's guard and then just tried to defend and sweep in someone's guard. And, um, and just kind of from that, that experience, I think it's, it comes down to a few things that I do all the time, and I'll try to explain. Um, so, Brian, can I use you, Brian? So it's, it's really simple. I mean, I can explain this class in three minutes, two minutes, probably. Anyway, I'm in someone's car, right? I have no idea what he's doing, and usually the higher, the, the more you improve, the higher your level, the more complicated stuff they do. Right? And there's no way, unless I study full time to get to, like every single day, all day long, that I can kind of catch up with all the, like the arms race, you know? The, the weapons develop all the time. I kind of stopped. I haven't really studied Jiu Jitsu in at least 10 years. I like, tried to learn some of the new trendy stuff. Um, that's impossible because I don't want to and I, it bores me to try and figure everything out. But if I kind of know what he mechanically needs to do, then I can, then I can usually defend most of this stuff. It's not like a magic pill where you just are invincible, but it helps me tremendously. And I just try this on everyone that I roll. So also, when if you roll with me during the week, or you watch me roll the next rest of the week, uh, you can probably notice what I do. Right? And it's very, very simple stuff. So uh, the first thing I, that I do is for him to basically do anything, he must kind of, there's like three things I need to defend. You know? And uh, it's not like if I defend one of them, then I'm su super safe. It's, I kind of jump between all three all the time, because those are like his three main attack entrances, right? Um, so the first thing, for him to really sweep me, or be efficient in sweeping me, he has to touch both my legs, right? There's very, very few sweeps where he don't, does not control both my legs. I would say technically not, but if we go into details, details, then maybe you would say single leg or a, a one-legged X card or something. I would argue that you still control the back leg by making it heavy so I can step. Um, but anyways, I'm not going to dive too deep into details. All you need to know from now and the next 20, 30 years is that for him to really be efficient in attacking the guard with sweeping me, he must touch both my legs. Right? So I have two options. One is to try to pass from here and not let him touch any legs. Right? This is usually where you start as a beginner. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm fast enough, I'm going to get it yeah, one day. Yeah? And you never like want to walk in because this is so dangerous. Yeah. Uh, every time you do that, you're just wasting your life. Right? You're not improving your guard passing by trying to run around. You literally have to step into the lion's cage yeah? and just let them pull you around. Right? It's, it's like trying, it's like surfing, but just staying out of the waves all the time. Yeah? You have to let them pull. Okay. So I literally have to give him one leg. There's no way around it. He must touch at least one leg if I want to have some kind of close distance to pass. Unless I want to run him. Anyway, so he must touch one leg. So usually I will step in with one leg, and I'm going to play my game from here. Right? Now, all I need to know is that this is fine, he'll get it. Yep, I'll give you this. But he needs to touch this leg to do pretty much anything. Yep. So I just try to prevent that. That's the first thing ever, and I do three things pretty simple. One is that I can create an ankle, I say like ankle block step. Create an angle. So if I stand like this, imagine if I step into him like this, now he's got full access to my legs. Yeah? Even if I stand here, it's kind of easy. So I always try to create like a little bit of this angle. Yeah? Even if he's laying down, the same if he's sitting up. Yeah, that helps. Finger in the ear, that's enough. <laughs> Notice his leg. It's always here. Right? For him to do anything here, he literally has to get to this leg. So if I put it here, that's like free for him, free sweep. So I create that angle. Obviously now, there might be some sweep, I don't know, because I don't know his techniques. There might be something where he tried to go for the leg this way, you know, and then I might have to angle the other way. 
but I'm always looking at how is he trying to reach, reach this leg and how can I make that distance longer, right? So, so I angle, so this. And the other thing I do is that I'll just block it. So maybe I cannot angle, but I just block that leg, grab the foot, right? Grab the pants, whatever. So I'll do this, try to touch my leg. Touch it, touch it. Just like a It's so weird. <laughs> Anyway, or just block it, you know? or if he sits up, I don't know what he's doing, I don't know what his move is, but I know he has to get there, right? so he, or if he's trying to reach with the hand, see that, always do something, always do something to prevent hand or foot or anything from touching that leg, and the last thing I'll have to do sometimes is just kind of step off, so that if he's doing like, let's say a try to punch me, I'll have to sometimes just do that. Take some practice, yeah. so I can step, block, or angle, right? And I just kind of combine all that, and it's basically just like a fancy description of don't even touch the back. Okay, so let's do sweep. See how he's always searching for that back leg somehow? Yeah, that came the hand. This is weird. This is bad. <laughs> and if I fail, I promise you can set, you can tell me why. I think it's really difficult. What's that left leg? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm in trouble. Yeah? That's not black belt magic. You see exactly what I'm doing, right? Just don't do it. So, three things ankle, block, or step. And you can do that however you want. Okay? Let's practice just a little bit. Nice, just this pace. Bottom person can play a little bit of sweeps, and you just try to keep, keep the back leg clear. That's the first thing. Okay? Let's try that. Waiting for the clap, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, it makes the video look better. You stand up and when you do this stuff, you feel like it's really weird. But the moment you roll with someone who's consistently not letting you touch that weird leg, you will, you will see how frustrating it is. It's mm. so cool. It's like you have to get there all the time. I made the big mistake of recently teaching that to all my students, and I'm like, my god, it's just a mess. Anyway, okay, uh, so let's try the next thing. So the next thing that I worry about is just, I mean, he's, at some point he's going to get on the inside of my legs. Right? That's, that's, no, sorry, he's going he's gonna to touch the back. It's, it happens, yeah? But, um, so the next thing I worry about is just not letting him control the space between my legs too much. Literally, if I'm here, I'm always in trouble. Yeah? So it's a fight for the inside. It's like, like wrestling, you know, fighting for the inside position all the time. You have to do the same with the legs. So if he's on the inside, I'm in trouble. So I have to kind of fix that uh, all the time. And there's, there's a few things to do. Like, very often, I don't know, I don't know the game, but very often you'll see he'll set something up and his move will be to move between my legs. Like there's a lot of streams where he's gonna swing in underneath me or something, or even like throw his legs underneath or shoot a spot underneath me. Especially people play like a lot of X guard style, uh, half guard, deep half guard, all this stuff, they have to get in between the legs. Yeah? And I have to always worry about that. I cannot let this happen. Right now, I'm literally screwed. Yeah, I'm gonna go flying in a second. So, uh, I just worry about that space. Do you play it like over two more Okay, I'll try something. I just go. I guess it's bad or off back. Yeah, that's bad. Um, so, uh, there's a few things I can do. The most obvious is just kind of close this place. Yeah, I'll do the no means no. <laughs> <laughs> Culturally inappropriate. 
you, you, you. I can say what I want. It's okay. It's okay. 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 So, uh, I okay. so I try to go between my Go. Attack those. So I might have to do that until I can step uh, the leg back in the center. Sometimes it's just closing like this. Uh, did you like uh, inside the experimental spin? Like inside the yeah. here? Who was good at that? Who was trying to do that inside spin on me all the time? I know, I was filming. I can't do it, but. That was you. That was me. And you stopped it. You heard of that? Inside, like, Kiss of the Dragon. Who, who, who called it that? Who called it the Kiss of the Dragon? I can only do it. Is that trend completely dead? That no, was, like, it's good. Seven years ago, nobody did. Everybody did the Kiss of the Dragon. I still do it. You still do it. Because you lost touch with it. You can try. <laughs> okay, all right. anyway. So maybe he's here. He's trying to spin in between my legs. No, I might just sit. Just close that spin. So I can get back up. Bear and ball? Yes. <laughs> anyway. Okay, spin between my legs, go. This, I just don't give him that space. I, I don't want him to get in there. So I just kind of close it by sitting down. It takes a bit of practice to be comfortable with sitting down, getting back up. Right? But the most important is that you always post. Right? I'm, not doing, I'm not doing this stuff. <laughs> I have to be here. Yeah, so try to get in between my legs, go like x card on an e pad. Yeah. So close the space. You see sometimes if like leg lock versus leg lock guys, sometimes they'll walk into the guard like this. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to be on the outside of the card, right? Like that. It's kind of weird. Um, and the last thing, uh, if I'm really low sometimes, if you do like Sorry, try to lift me up and it's like x card stuff. Like this, always bad. So how I need to defend that from low is that I kind of hook my feet, hook versus hook, not cross them, but just hook. Right. He'll hook all that stuff. Up. That's it. Right? I, I literally just defend that space between my legs because that's what he wants. And so go again. I fail, and I'm in trouble. Big, big. Now I'm going to go. Now, now I need superhuman balance to stay here. So, that's number two. Always worry about that space. Yeah? Because sometimes, especially as beginners, you, you will like try to pass your walking like this. Yeah? And then you just go flying because you literally just give that space away. You have to always keep that. I mean, I, this is a little bit dangerous to understand. Right? But sometimes you have to. You know? Especially if he's like shooting in between the legs. Go. See that? I guess close it. Don't let him get there. Sit, cross the feet. Don't let him get in. Okay. Um, so this one is a little bit more difficult just to practice right away. But let's just try. Um, play guard like before. Bottom person is trying to do whatever you like to do, getting in between the legs. If you know nothing about it, just try to put yourself in there. I don't know. You might like X guard, deep half guard, all that stuff. You know. Even like one legged X guard, get in between, spin underneath, all that stuff. Right. It's all based on getting in between the legs of the one. So we try to avoid it. Okay? Let's play with that for like four or five minutes. No clap. <laughs> <laughs> We're so used to it though. Uh, so the last rule is uh, it's kind of similar. And this is like the king of all rules. And literally every single class I ever teach is just the same. And I, it's a, in, in my academy at home, I say, day one, I teach this, and I teach the same every class until you stop training. So, uh, it's basically what I try to do at all times is just to keep my head over my head. Right? I don't ever want to get in a situation where my, my hip is high and my head is low. Unless I know 100% what I'm doing and I'm in full control, which I'm barely. So if there's any, any, any chance of me being in danger, I can always default back to head over here. Right? And it's literally just it's basic rest. Okay? So straight back, head up, hip down. That's what I try to do. But you could say it's, it's posture, posture. But it's not posture up, because posture up usually you feel or think you have to do this. Right? But that's not what it is. It's just any situation, your head must be at a higher level than your head. Right? So that means sometimes I have to raise my head 
and sometimes I have to lower my, my hip, right? I just always have to fix that. It doesn't mean I have to sit like this at all times. Um, and this helped me tremendously because pretty much every sweep or submission that he needs to do, he must break them. Like, there are some few exceptions, right? But if I, can, if I can constantly have that in mind, it's gonna be really difficult for him to attack. Not impossible, but really, really difficult. Um, and that helps me a lot because I don't, I rarely, I would say, know exactly what my training partner opponent is doing because usually at a higher level they do so much, so many details, there's no way I can figure it out. But I know what I have to do. Right? So instead of trying to understand his game, I just always look at my own body posture. Where's my head and where's my butt? And do I keep a straight back just to be strong? Right? And uh, that's pretty much all I do all the time, plus the other two things. So when I'm in the guard, I know for him to attack, he must lower my head or lift my hip. Yeah? Um, even when he's touching my back leg. Right? So the back leg is nice if I can keep it clear, but it's, it's almost impossible to never let him touch the leg. Sometimes I get in trouble, and trouble means head over body at all times. Yeah? Um, so let's, let's try to demo. And sometimes you see like high level uh, you know, people defend the guard, and it's like, ah, oh, super balanced, you know, they never get swept. And if you notice, it's just because head never goes down, but never goes up. And the other way around, if you notice what guard attack actually is, if you watch even super high level people will compete or something, you see the guard, literally all they try to do is find different ways to pull the head down and lift the butt. Right. So let's try, let's try, so, uh, attack. let's see what he does. And then I'll explain after what I do. Just give it all you got, don't be shy. <laughs> and you will see when I get in trouble, that's it. You see that, my head was about to go down. Immediate trouble. This is pretty bad. Yeah. Go. Go. I get myself in a bit of trouble. Okay, notice, notice this is bad. Okay, go. See how I saved that? And let him get a sweep, and you see what happens. That's right. That goes down. Let's try again. Possible balance or just head over hip. Let's go. I have no idea what he's doing, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I could not now tell you, uh, I couldn't give you like a short explanation of his technique because I literally have no idea. I have no idea what's going on. But do you see what's going through my head? Only thing I think about is where my, where's my own body, right? It doesn't mean that I never get swept, but obviously it helps me a little bit. So <laughs> let's talk about that. So, let's talk about this. He needs to do one of two things. He needs to lower my head, which he was doing a little bit. Did you notice that one time where I was in real trouble? I started face planting that way. You know? I was like, that's when it really started to go bad. And I just saved it like this for a second. But that was the, that was the most dangerous moment for me, when my head started diving. Yeah, he caught me off guard. I was like, oh shit. I'm like going like this. So he needs to pull my head down or prevent my hip from going long, right? And that, so his game specifically was more about moving my hip up all the time. And that makes it really difficult for me, but. So look, <clears throat> he must prevent my hip from going, uh, going low or, pull my, or he must pull my head down in one way. Though. Sometimes it's, it's this, you know, sometimes he, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, <laughs> but suddenly my head went flying this way. Yeah, yeah that, my head went flying, yeah. So, that's basically the foundation of every sweep he's trying. Yeah? Um, so let's, let's look a little bit at first. We'll, we'll start like really simple. He grabs something to pull my head down. Bad. 
right? If I stand up, even worse because my hip is high. Like that. So I have to fix that. I have to defend that or I have to fix my hip position. Like this, right? So it's always about getting the head back up or the hip back down. Right? Now, if he starts to pull me down, I have, apart from grip breaking, yeah, I have a few simple options. Yeah? Because when I stand in the guard and he grabs something here, or maybe even he grabs my sleeve, I know what he must do with it. I have, no, I have no clue what the technique is, but I know he must lower my head. There is no way around it. Yeah? So set up one of your best moves. What's your best setup? See? Yeah, this is fucking bad. See that? <laughs> that's, that's what happened. Now I get it. <laughs> so, you see exactly what's going on. There's an arm here, my hip doesn't go low, but my head goes flying in a second, yeah? So, whenever he takes any grip, I'm not trying to understand the technique, but I'm just trying to understand how is he trying to pull my head down? What is his move to lower my head? Because that's what he must do. Just like, how is he trying to touch my back leg, yeah? So, let's do something really simple. You grab my, 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 my collar, and he wants to pull it some direction, right? I say, what is this technique? I don't know. I don't have time to learn it right now. I don't have access to YouTube at this moment. But I got a few things that I'll do. One is that I can break the grip if it's E, right? But I feel the direction he wants to pull my head, and it's kind of obvious, like my head is going that way. Yeah? So the first thing I could do is literally just lean my weight the other way. So you try to pull my head, and I just use my weight. Yeah, very often that's enough for me tries to set something up, I see, okay, he's trying to pull my head that way, I don't want it, so I'm leaning my head the other way. Yeah. The other thing I could do is to build some kind of frame on him. Well, I'll just grab something, and then if he's pulling that direction, I'll, I'll build a frame that goes the same way. Yeah, so now I can't lean, but I build the frame, so pull me. And he's kind of a little bit stuck. Yeah? Sometimes on his arm, sometimes here, you know, maybe I'll do that, see that, and then that kills his move. I still don't know what sweep he's doing. That's a really important point. Right? So you try to pull, and I build some kind of frame. And the frame is usually a locked out arm. Of course, there's a million like, what if, what if, what if, if it goes for like wrist locks and all that stuff. Right? But don't worry about it. Like that, I build a frame, I lean my weight, or I post on the mat, which I do quite a lot. If you, you, I don't know if you noticed, in that round many times, I saved my ass just by posting on the mat. Yeah? Because often you're, especially as a beginner, you're, you want to hold your opponent. Right? But very often, all you need to do is just post your hand because I only think about where does my head go. Okay, so pull me. See that? And you saw before when, he, when, when I went flying like that, that was so bad. Like this. this saved me. Right? Because I posted so my head doesn't go further. I'm like at 98% of the sweep now. Right? I'm almost done. But the only reason why I survived is a post. Yeah? And then maybe I'll start moving and keep my head up. So, Three options when he's pulling. One is to lean my weight. Obviously, then, you know, what if he's pulling and pushing and all that stuff, right? But this is the foundation. Lean, build a frame, or just post on the map. And very often when people who play like, play like shin on shin, if you do that, and like, oh, you go to something. And I start going. Very often, this is going to save me. Just a post on the map. Oh, my head doesn't go down. If I don't have that post, now it's like strength versus strength, right? and I'm losing it. So, okay. so first, let's just try, like, really simple. You pull something. Uh, yeah, just actually do it super simple. Just grab something and pull. Lean. Yeah, that's one. Two. Frame. Three. Okay. Post on the mat. Yeah, those are the three main kind of things I'll do to prevent. Okay. Just try that first, and then we put it in like a little guard drill after. Just do this first. Okay? You can do that. Okay, go. <laughs> and then, of course, this goes, you dive into the rapid hole of that, you realize there's like a trillion variations of him pulling trying to lower your head, and but it, you can put the defense in the same three boxes always, right? Like lean your weight, post a uh, frame on him, or post on the mat. Right? Now, uh, the other thing that he has to do is he has to prevent my hip from going low, right? If I play a guard like this, 
and very, very difficult to swing unless he literally just stands up over it, right? Unfortunately, this is also not a very like, practical guard for passing or something, right? Some people turn this into an art, you know? especially if they're, especially in, in these leg lock days, you know, this guard passing is coming back. But this was, I guess, before the, in the 90s and back, like, nobody would stand up and pass, ever. It was always like passing on your knees. Maybe even one leg up. Yes, like yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, but in terms of not like falling, defined by head down, butt up, this is a very safe place to be for passing. Yeah, but I can't really move. You know? So the lower I could get my hip, the, the more difficult I am to, to tilt. You know? Do you remember those things when you were a kid? When you, you, I don't know, in the 80s, you, know, you push it and it's like, they cannot fall. Because the, the center of gravity is as low as possible. Right? So some people will be like, like this to pass the guy. Right? And it's really difficult. He literally has to like somehow like force my hip up. Right? I have one guy in my team who's really good at this. He's just he just does like over under passes from here and nothing else. And it, it's a bitch to to deal with. Because you can't really play any guard. I have to just stand up and wrestle or run around and something. Anyway, so the point is that if I'm standing and passing, which is like it's the standard these days, so then a lot of his game is based on preventing me from lowering my hip. Okay? Because even if he's successful in pulling my head down, just pull my head down somehow, like that, very often I'll just do that. And now I'm back to safety, right? Hip on your head and I can play my game and nothing is uh, Sometimes it happens that I'm here and he does nothing to my hip, he just grabs my, my and tries to pull me down. And this, and this is what I do. I just follow him down instead of doing this. <laughs> this is triangle armor, armor plata, helicopter sweep, fucking everything, bare bottle, everything goes wrong. And this is me passing the car in a second, yeah? So, but he can't do that. That doesn't work. You see beginners just try to pull down the head like this with their arms, like they're in the fucking rowing machine, you know? <laughs> but he needs to do something about my hip so it doesn't lower. And the, the stuff he can do is just the stuff you already know. Like, it could be a delaheva. Like that, even I was clever. He post, put my hand underneath. That's that's horrible. Now, now my own arm is blocking me from lowering my hip. Right? It could be the lahiva one way or the other. It could be this way. Now it's really difficult for me to, to get my hip down. If he if he starts pulling me now, look at that. My hip is going nowhere. It stays up, and this is where I really get in trouble. Uh, it could be even just foot in the hip. Like a lot of spider guard stuff is based on that. Like that, just some spider guard stuff. In the hip and then, yes, see that now I'm in real trouble. I can't put my hip down, and this is where I get caught in triangles. And so, just like before, when I have to think about how is he pulling my head down, now I have to think about how is he keeping my hip from lowering. If there's nothing keeping it from hip uh, from lowering, I just lower it. So he tries to pull my head down like that. You know, I just literally just like like go right like, so. like this. This happens quite often. But anything he puts in, now I have to look at his legs usually. I see this and I realize, uh oh, I can't, I can't put my hip to the mat. Yeah? So I have to deal with that. And this is where if you go into specifics of saying, okay, how do I kill like a delay hook? My weight, I'm not gonna spend time on that today. You know, how do I clear that foot from the inside? Maybe you know, I'll start to put some pressure on it like that to kill it. Or even the classic, stand up. Why do I do this? What is that guard for? Right. Keeping his hip up, lowering his head. If I can get him here, now I'm in a really good position. Right. But if I pull down and he just kind of brushes that foot off my hip, I, I just, I just, it's, it's like super sorry. So now uh, try a little bit to play just some kind of, do whatever you want. Okay, yes, good. And now we just stop for a second. We have a little conversation. We're like, this is bad for lowering my hip. Yeah? So I have to kind of deal with that. You get my hip low, and now you try to do what you were trying to do before. I know it's not. Yeah, yeah. So now let's try something else. Okay, so I clear that hip. Oh, shit. <laughs> See here, I'm in trouble. I can do that. Now I'm safe again. Okay, go. Oh, damn it. This is so bad. And see this? Oh, now I'm in real. <laughs> this is very bad. Uh, so, this is very, like, 
little moments where you realize you cannot lower your head. Right? And instead of trying to figure out what he's doing, just try to fix yourself. Yeah? Fix your hip. If it cannot go low, you have to clear things like this so you can lower your hip. Right? Otherwise, you'll be in trouble if your hip goes down. So just try to experiment with this for a few minutes. We put it all together, and I promise it's going to make a little bit more sense. Okay? Let's go. <laughs> For some, for some reason, in, uh, as I always say this, for some reason, in let's say if you walk into a, a gym, like a weightlifting gym, there's a barbell, and you walk up to it like this, and you're just like, yeah! you know, people are going to come running to stop you. Right? Or if you lift the, uh, if you lift furniture, you, well, I know I said the same fucking joke every time. If you lift furniture, because it's true, if you lift furniture for your grandmother like this, she's going to stop you, right? But if so you you somehow, in jiu-jitsu, if you shoot double legs like this, or stand in someone's car like this for years and years, nobody's gonna say anything. Like, totally fine. <laughs> totally fine. Like this. And that's how you break. Yeah? And like seriously, what the fuck is this? Inverted guard. What is this? Inverted guard. Inverted guard. Yes. Type A Baron Bolo. Come on. Look at this. I don't change my position. With his weight here, like that. This is you moving furniture for your grandmother in the wrong way. It's like literally, inverted guard is literally bad posture, like with, with, the, with gravity inverted. And weight on you. This is the worst. It's like that looking like this every single day. Right? And no shit, you see like young jiu jitsu guys, 21 years old with back problems, right? <laughs> that was actually me. Because I did a lot of inverted guard and then fucked up my back. Don't do it. Right? It's proper posture, everything. Right? This, this is true, right? Now, okay. So now we'll try to put it all together, right? I know this is like just throw you everything in practice, but this is literally just what you have to do. So I'm gonna try to do it while comment, like uh, doing commentary. So try to not let them touch the back leg. Right? It's gonna happen at some point. Right? But defend the, the keep the rear leg clear as much as possible. Worry about the space between your legs, so it doesn't just get in there and control everything. That's that's bad time, yeah? And at all times, keep head up and butt up, right? Some of these things are gonna fail now and then, and you can still survive or you can get swept or something. I would say if head up, butt down fails, then unless you are in a very, very, very strong, like let's say over under pass or something, or a double under pass position, then you're probably like fucked. Then a split second later, you're probably swept or submitted. So I try to just keep that as the most important. So let's try a little bit and you see what I do. Okay, just attack. A submission to me. See that? I clear my hip. Oh, I lean away from that thing. Oh, I don't want it to control my hip. This is annoying. Oh, close that space. Yeah, don't let him take that because then my head goes flying. Okay, okay, okay. See, there's no control on my hips. I stand really strong like this gorilla stance. Okay, that's pretty bad. See how my head is going down with that? This is bad, see that? This is very bad. Okay, go. Do I fix that? See, I don't. Yeah. And you see why I failed? Because he managed to keep my hip up and lower my head. Okay, go. Same thing is not gonna happen again, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that. <laughs> so just lean away from it. Back leg, clear, yes! Oh shit, no, no. Okay, go again. I'll pull the head, no. Clear my hip. Protect that space. Go, go, go. Oh shit, this is so bad. I can't lower my hip now, see? That's very bad. So I gotta defend my, my head with everything. Post on the map. Hip under my head. Oh god, this is not bad, no. Don't get tempted. This grip is so strong. Go. Oh. <laughs> oh, same thing before. See my head. Ah, oh, the step. There it was. Oh my god, fuck, stop going there. Okay. Close on the mat.
See, I figured it out. <laughs> Go. And you see how, why he's pulling that hand? Okay, take it. If he's, if he's successful, done. Take those down. So, can you all see what I'm doing? It's not really rocket science. You know? Just that. Defend the space. Try to keep that back leg clear as much as possible. But of all things, head up and down. Right? So let's try to practice a little bit. Uh, a few minutes. Switch on your own. Maybe I'll tell you to switch partner at some point. Right? Just go this pace. Nice and slow. It's not a competition. Audio. <laughs> let's try. Let's try. <laughs> so, when you stand, I recommend that you try to just push your chest forward more, like that, so you don't have this posture. It's also better for you if you do jiu-jitsu for a decade, two decades or more, you know, if you always have this, you know, you start to get probably back problems or back posture, and so I think it's very important to fix that from day one, to try and keep a strong posture as you're in the car. Um, Chin up always makes you stronger. It's like lifting weights. You can try to do, you know, or even bench press. You know, if you try to bench press like this, you got nothing. You gotta keep straight, straight upper body. Same if you lift like that, it's pretty bad. If you lift like this, it's pretty good. Yeah. So the same when you're in the car, you try to keep your chin up. Whenever you're resisting, pull your head down. And I feel like the the most important point here is not if you succeed or not, because it's not like tell you this and now you never get swept or submitted again. The point is that when you fail, you will know why. Right? So if you, at some point, you, you get swept or submitted, hopefully you can see, oh, I couldn't clear my back leg, or you managed to lift my hip, or you managed to pull my head down. Right? Because then you know what to fix. Right? What is it Brit says? Failing without knowing why is torture. <laughs> Pure torture. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you want to fix it. You know? so, so if you fail and you don't know why, you're just going to make the same mistakes again and again. Right? You get swept 100 times in training and you have no idea what happened. Right? And you're actually wasting your time if you're trying to learn a sport. Right? If you fail getting swept or submitted, and you can point out, oh right, I can see this grip, pull my head down and his foot position was, made it difficult for me to lower my hip, right? then you know exactly what to try and improve. And that's super important if you want to improve in any sport, I guess. Otherwise, just fail, fail, fail. The same, same thing. Um, so let's just try a few minutes. The last round, do the same thing, and try to when you're on top, try to just push your chest out a little bit, rather a little bit too much than a little bit too little, right? So here bad, here neutral, and this is good. Right now you're strong. Also in the training. And whenever you feel that pull, try to look up with your head. You don't always have to look at the opponent if they're not really running away or anything. So. Just look up, that makes you strong, okay? When you tense your neck, you're stronger to pull back. Uh, so let's give it a few more minutes. Grab your training partner. Just switch on your own and experiment a little bit. And obviously, you can have the rest of your life to play with this, but we'll just try a few more minutes while I'm here. Let's try it. Okay. So, just to recap, the three, the three things you need to worry about, at least what I worry about when I'm defending in the guard, is keep that rear leg clear, right? Create an angle, block, or step. Those are the three things you can do. Most of the time, especially in the beginning of the round, I'll be able to create that angle. When it starts to get heated, it's more like just block him at any chance from touching that leg. Grab the foot, grab the hand, block it, nothing can touch this. Right? <coughs> Defend the space between your legs. If you've got a game where he tries to get in, you have to like block that, or there's a few more things you can do, like, like uh, rotate your feet on the inside, all that stuff. Or literally just sit, cross your feet. Just don't let them do this to you, with you, pardon me. There is nothing I can do here that's good for me, if he's in here. Huh? And the last thing is keep your head over your hip, right? and it helps tremendously if you have a, a healthy habit of good posture. If this is your habit, you're going to be struggling and fighting. That's it, Jensen. You're going to be struggling and using so much power to defend the exact same thing, right? Like this. Whereas if you just lift your chin and shoot your chest forward, 
Now there's so much more resistance that way he wants to go. And always try to clear the, the hip. But the key is, I don't try to understand what he's doing, I just look at my own body position all the time. Right? Where am I, where is my head, where is my hip, and are they going the wrong way? Right? That's the only thing I worry about. And then I can you know, surf around in the guard for hours and hours and hours. Of course I get swept and submitted, but when it happens, I can tell exactly why. Like when Brian caught me three or four times, right away I can tell, oh, that's exactly what happened. You know? that's, that's it. And then I can work to improve that. And um, I highly recommend this. You know, if, if you have 10 years with nothing to do in Jiu Jitsu, you just walk into someone's car, let them play their best game, and just try to, to survive there. It's, a, it's, a, it's never time wasted you know, to defend the swoops and submission. It's a valuable skill to work on, always. Uh, sometimes your, your guard defense, the way you, it will be taught, is that you just teach a lot of passing. Right? And eventually you will spend enough time there so you kind of figure out how to not get swept or submitted. It's a little bit by, like building a, a fortress just with cannons. Enemies coming and just shoot, shoot, shoot like crazy and you hope you kill them all. But if they pass the cannons, you have no walls, right? So uh, you have to start building the walls. You never, it's never a bad investment to build walls around your castle first. Right? So that's why I, I put a lot of emphasis on this uh, in every position. So have a strong defense and then the passing kind of happens. If you just teach, teach passing right away, it's so difficult because you don't have the correct position and then you get swept. Um, especially when you start to get good at, at defending, you will realize the moments you get caught in sweeps or submissions are when you start to attack. Because when you attack, you usually have to give up on some of your defense, right? You have to run out from your, from your, <laughs> from your fortress, right? Run out and try to grab something and run back in. And that's when you're vulnerable, when you start passing. So um, it's very much the skill of, of switching between offense and defense. That's why jiu-jitsu takes unlimited, like, decades to learn, because you just, it just keeps going, keeps going. But it's a good place to start. So I recommend, at least this week, and probably for the rest of your life, stand in someone's guard and try to defend sweeps and submissions. That's a good, good time invested. And if you watch me roll, uh, now you can, I will 100% do it every, thing, every single round, and probably you can see what I'm doing, and that is not absolute magic. I just practice exactly this for the last t 10 years or more. Um, good, that's it. I'm teaching a few more classes. I don't remember when, but uh, at some point during the week, and of course everybody's most welcome. So. Uh, Thank you for joining and welcome to the camp. It's nice to teach the first camp. I usually don't do that because it's so stressful on the first day, but I feel like I want to get back in the... Like, <laughs> I couldn't wait to teach 100 people again, so that's, it's been a while. Okay, thank you so much for joining and uh, I'll see you around. Catch me on the open mat for a roll and try to sweep me or something. Class photo. <laughs> huh? Class photo. Class photo. I will do one later. Not now, but I got to do the next test. Five minutes. Okay, thank you guys. So,